Okay, I received that word. Thank you, ladies, for your uh, your ministry tonight. I really uh, thought the uh, song selection was appropriate. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, um, I don't know why, but I just feel like the Lord wants to touch you. Is that okay? Yeah, just hold your hand. Somebody stand beside her, behind her. Don't let her fall. And just give them your burden. The Lord sees your heart and the heaviness on your heart. And I, okay, so I see that you have heaviness. He wants you to give it to him. And don't, you know, the Lord knows everything that's going on. And... Uh, Lord, we just yield it to you. We pray that you you take that off of her, that burden that she's uh, carrying right now and pour out uh, hope and refreshing. There he is. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ministry touching her heart right now. Just know there's power in your words and when you have hope and your prayers, you know, keep your eyes on, on what the Lord has done and, and speak life over him. All right. I believe he lifted that off of you. You feel like a little relief yeah. there? Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow, how many know what season it is now? <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a time of the year for those that may not be aware of it, where uh, the ancient Israelites were instructed to keep uh, a feast, and actually, it's uh, revealed in Scripture it was supposed to be forever. And uh, and even in the New Testament, we're supposed to remember some of these feasts. I like to remember them all. And this one that we're in, it just started, I believe, yesterday, is called the Feast of Tabernacles. And so what does that mean? That, that means he's he wants to make his abode. He wants to dwell in you. Jesus came so that you might be uh, part of his household. And it's an awesome time to, to be alive. Praise the Lord. And so if you have not experienced what I'm talking about, you can. But I bring it out just to honor the word and, and the Lord because um, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a lot of people, they, they look just only at the New Testament, maybe what they've heard in certain churches, and I'm for all the church, you know, as long as it's in line with the word. But how many think that we should look at all those things? What we have in the new is rooted out of the old. It's revealed. And it's fulfilled in the person of Jesus. And he made that sacrifice so that you could be transformed too by that same word and become a place of habitation. Praise the Lord. And that's where the safety is. That's where you find uh, the shield that he'll head you in and help you against your circumstances. When he's in you, he's with you, right? And if God is with you, who can be against you? That's some good revelation if you get a hold of this by the Spirit. Um, so uh, that's the season that we're in right now. And I heard some revelation um, this morning. I woke up about 1225 this morning. And I started hearing some thoughts and I didn't know what the Lord was saying at first. Uh, but he, uh, he started talking to me about his inheritance and uh, what he's doing in this hour, what he's been doing. And what is he doing? Well, he's bringing you into his inheritance. 
In fact, it helps if you see that by the scriptures and, and come into alignment with it and believe it's already done. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they just, they read it or they hear it, but they don't appropriate it to their life, but you can. Where you can have a, a presence, a witness of the Lord, witness of his blood through belief, through action, and uh, you can know this by the Spirit. Somebody says it's not by might nor by power, but by his Spirit. When his Spirit reveals things to you, it transforms you, changes your nature, and it raises you up from the, the mindset of the carnal and gives you a perspective from, from the Lord's point of view. And it's, it's all good. Praise the Lord. So, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, a few things um, that he's doing. And this may be a prophetic season right now that we're in. How many believe that every year we go around through these, these, um, these years or these circuits or these cycles, and it's to bring you into um, your destiny? And in, into those things that he's ordained you to walk out. And um, and if you really want to know some of the things about who you are in Christ, yeah, I would encourage you to enter into the way that God does things. And I'm going to bring this out. I bring it out every so often. Uh, let's just go really quick and, and look at this Isaiah 28, because there may be somebody new or somebody watching and uh, they think, oh, I never hear God or this or that. Well, you can. You can know God. You can hear him. How do we hear him? Through faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? And God watches over his word and he, he can bring you into an understanding, bring you into a fellowship that's greater than any fellowship that you have in the world. Isaiah 28 and uh, so if you want to study the Bible and you don't really understand, maybe somebody watching, this is how God teaches people. And he gives us the roadmap. And it's revealed really clear in Isaiah 28. And um, I have been uh, applying this principle um, to my life and I don't try to make me, uh, messages. I don't try to worry about tomorrow. No, I seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And those things that I have need of are just added. He, he wakes me up early in the morning and I get revelation. He shows me what to share. And it's really interesting when you look at that over a period of time, you'll see that you're right in line with what the Bible says. Not saying I'm I'm perfect, I don't get off track a little bit here or there, but I'm trying. How many believe that he knows how to guide us? And so here this chapter is uh, is a revelation. He's dealing with the crown of pride. Really interesting. And but it says here if you go down in a uh, verse Nine, I would encourage you to study the whole chapter. But it says, whom shall he teach knowledge? How many want to be taught by the Lord? Right? Not by just some preacher ministering according to the letter. And people can get all, all worked up. Anybody ever seen people get all worked up? Get real zealous, you know? It happens. And, and bewitching spirits get in... In, in our in our mouth if if we're not being led by the spirit it's through the anointing right when we think that we're something or we can do something in and of ourselves we've just crossed that line where we're seeking to do things on our own maybe we're we're trying to help God out but you know he don't need you no <laughs> He's already done it, and he wants to, you know, we're called co-laborers with him, but we have to, um, we have got to come into alignment with his word. And so we were, we were sharing last week how 
uh, everything Jesus did was according to the will of the Father. And he was walking, uh, uh, you know, on this planet. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit with power, going about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And how did he do it? He did it through zeal. Zeal. It says in Isaiah 9, that is the zeal of the Lord that brings forth the kingdom. The witness of the kingdom brings forth the judgment of, of the Lord. His judgments are good. Unless you're on the other side and you're rebellious. Yeah. But he wants us to choose life and to, and to walk by faith. And, and his zeal is revealed in Scripture. If you look at that word in, in the original and you start studying it out, is his jealousy. He's jealous over his people. How many believe that? He made a promise. So what am I talking about? He made a promise to a man named Abram. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And Abraham, uh, he, he followed the Lord. He left the, the, his, his world that he knew. And he was led into uh, the promised land. And God made promises to Abraham and his seed. And his seed uh, is part of the Lord's inheritance, and that's you. And he's jealous over his seed. How many believe that? And if you can get this revelation, it, it transforms your life. Um, so, um, and that's what I hope to do here. But it says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Isaiah 28, verse 9. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? This is what we... We want to know. Jesus says, if any man will do his will, he should know the doctrine. Whether I do the works or it's a father doing the works. So it's connected to the will of God. And he gives all of us the ability to, to will and to do his good pleasure. He really does. And so who is it? It's those that are weaned from the milk, drawn from the breast. It's okay to be a babe. But it says in verse 10, for a precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And uh, that's a powerful statement. If you look at scripture and when you see something in one place, you want to understand it better. Well, find out, uh, you know, what did God say about this in other places, too? Because it's all connected. He puts it that way for a reason. And, uh, and then it says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest. You want to enter into the rest? Well, there's a revelation here where you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Okay? Yet they would not hear. Did you get a little refreshing a little while ago? You did, huh? I just doing what I felt led to do. But the word was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And it says a whole lot more. So that's what I do when I teach here um, on Fridays. I, I just... Okay, Lord, show me what you want me to do. And then he brings me into revelation. I look at things in other places, and it deepens my understanding. It broadens my perspective. And, and I'm getting revelation just by teaching the word here. And the Lord changes me and helps, helps to uh, make a way for me to walk out my destiny. And I'm on my path, and I'm just trying to help my friends. And maybe some way, somehow, this might help you. But get a. What does this mean? If you want to break it down, we'll get a Strong's concordance or get a, a Bible with cross references, and start looking at things that way. Don't just take some man's word or some woman's word. Yeah, or get an app, a Bible app. Esword is a good one. There's other ones. They got the and just look at things. And, and you'll see God is, he'll work, he'll work through you, yielding, say, okay, God, I want to know you. 
and I'm going to do things your way. And there it is right there. It's laid out. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. And so he has revealed to me that what one thing that he's doing, he's bringing his, his treasured people into their inheritance. And um, if you want to know what that looks like, you can look at what he did in the days of Sinai. And it talks about that. He's coming again as in the days of Sinai. And, um, and, and you can see this scripture here. I'm going to come back and show it to you in the New Covenant. But what was happening in the days of Sinai? Let's go look at it. Uh, Exodus 19. And I believe this may be an appropriate or a now word, seeing that we are on uh, the brink, if not the very beginning of the, the third day. And what was happening? Well, he just brought them out of Egypt. He brought them out to the mountain. Gave instructions to the priests, preparing to make covenant with these people so that he could bring them in to their promised land, their inheritance. But not only that, but he wanted them to know who they were as well in his eyes. And uh, so let's look at this. And this is over in Exodus 19. And um, I'll just pick up verse 5 first to start off with. And so now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. A lot of people out there think that they're the God, or they're they're they they give no place to God, and in in their life, there's people in government that are. Um, anyways, I don't have to say anything, but he says in scripture he reveals he's going to take them in their own vanity. There's going to be delusion. I'll just say it this way, vanity breeds insanity, and it blinds you from the truth that's revealed in Christianity. I don't know if I can. Vanity breeds insanity. Oh, yeah. It will blind you. So, so hear that. He wants you to become a peculiar treasure. He sees that already. When he saves you, he has this in mind. And just understanding that by the Spirit is a big deal. And it says, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words you shall speak to the children of Israel. Right? Let's look at it a little bit more. Let's back up and look at it in a little broader context here. And, and so I'm bringing this out because I believe the Bible um, says he's going to come as in the days of Sinai. And I, I want to look at that aspect a little bit here, too, while we're here and maybe reveal a little bit of your identity. Because the Bible says your, your identity, your life is hid in Christ and God. And it's unsearchable apart from the Holy Spirit, apart from the Word. We can imagine all kinds of things, but uh, unless our imagination is is a, is a fruit of the word, it's going to be a vain imagination. And that's just the truth. So here it says in verse 1, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they to the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called 
unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob. And, uh, oh, wow. Hey, I'm telling you, there's so many things happening, being fulfilled. How many have been paying attention to that that supernova that's that's going around the world right now? Anybody ever been talking about the star? Yeah, and could it be that that light originated around 2,000 years ago into our system? And could it be that um, it was a sign pointing to the Messiah? Just like Balaam prophesied in Numbers 24, 17, star of Jacob. Just interesting. Now, I'm not saying that is, but I find it interesting. And there's a lot of people that are, are thinking that way as well. In other words, it's the same light. It's taken 2,000 years for that same light to reach us. And there's more. That's so prophetic. If you look at it, the brightness of it, and uh, it ties in with the year that we're in, 5785, and so many things, if you study it out. It's interesting. I can't go there tonight, but, and so this is what he wants him to say to the house of Jacob. And uh, how many believe you might be connected to that through Jesus? Right? You've seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Okay. In the New Covenant, it talks about that in Revelation chapter 12. He's going to give them eagles' wings for a season. Interesting. War is going to break out. And anyways, now there... For if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be a, unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words you shall speak unto the children of Israel. And it's really interesting. If you read on, it gets even more interesting. Moses came and called for the elders and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. They didn't do it though, except for a few of them. And, uh, and Moses returned the words um, of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said to him, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told these words um, of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, sanctify them today, tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Right? And our sanctification is in Jesus. He was sanctified. You can see that in John 17, that you might be sanctified. And be ready against the third day. How many believe that? We, we could be in that day. I, I can't go into it, but we're there. We're close to it if we're not in it already. I'll just say it that way. And the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And what happened? The fire came on that mountain. You can look at the real mountain. It's still black. It's interesting, huh? In fact, the archaeologists have found um, evidence of the Exodus narrative. It's there. And a lot of people are oblivious to it. Not only that, they found evidence for King David, evidence for Jesus, and all kinds of evidence is there if people would just look. Yeah, and it might draw them into faith. And you shall set bounds unto the, unto the people round about, saying, Take heed uh, to yourselves that you go not up unto the mount and touch or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death. And there shall not a hand touch it. 
but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be by beast or man, beast or man, and shall not live when the trumpet sounds. Interesting. People are waiting for that trumpet. Every year they blow that trumpet. Okay, when the trumpet sounds long, they shall come up to the mountain. And Moses said, come down from the mountain unto the people and sanctified the people and washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Anyways, anyways, so you keep looking at all that. It's really interesting. And, and what was he doing? He was fulfilling his promises. And he said nobody could see him. Before the, before the new covenant, you couldn't see the Lord. But you can see him through Jesus, right? Through his death. When you become a living sacrifice, when you become a living sacrifice, you pick up your cross and you come into alignment with what the Bible says, that you are buried with him in his baptism, you're going to be in position to see him and to know him through the power of his resurrection. And it's a, it's a, it's a mystery, but you can enter into it. And uh, it's revealed in Scripture, it's going to be a day of fire. We've been talking about the light, how God's light shines. It's firelight, right? Power in that light. Is that right, brother? Maybe we'll see more of that tonight. And uh, and that light shines in the darkness, but the darkness doesn't comprehend it because there's a lack of fellowship or covenant or a lack of love. And everything God does is to love. And he moves on our behalf based on what he has said because of his promises. Very simple. But we can we can confuse things and get really deep in our own understanding and try to work things out and figure things out. You can't figure this out. You have to be led into revelation. It's the only way it comes through hearing and hearing by the word. You have you can't be like the religious leaders in in, in Jesus's day. Paul says, "I bear my brethren a witness. They have a zeal of God, but not according to." knowledge their zeal was radical judgmental zeal they tried to kill jesus for telling the truth they did and all kinds of things happened to people because of their zeal that was not according to knowledge but jesus was zealous according to knowledge and he came to give so that you might live and that's the difference and that come come on all of us and it's powerful. So we, we need that. How many think we need more of that kind of zeal? Where God is doing the work. And uh, we're just walking in his will. But you got to yield. So I keep bringing this out. I, I do it on purpose because we, we hear these things, but do we hear them by the Spirit? Have we entered into a place where we can actually hear him? And have we yet to get the revelation that he's probably been resisting us for years? And that's the reason why there's a lack of ministry, true ministry, where the spirit of truth is bearing witness is because of, of, of uh, what the Bible calls a lack of meekness. Pride. He resists the proud, but gives grace to the meek. And um, Moses... He chose Moses, and he it's revealed in Scripture, he was the meekest man in the world. Blessed are the meek, right? Jesus said, right? For theirs is, I think, the kingdom of heaven. And we all have access into his meekness, our Lord's meekness, where we can move in the realm of the kingdom through his witness, through God's witness. And that witness is initiated through his blood, through repentance. So, so simple, but so powerful. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
And any move of God, true move of God you've ever seen on this planet throughout the history has been through repentance, humility, yielding to God. All the other things, they weren't real moves of God. Just the truth. I can name one right now would really upset a lot of people. Happened a few years back. The Lord says, don't watch one of those outpouring deals on television. Don't watch even one of them. I told the whole church, don't even watch one. They didn't listen to me, but I didn't watch one. Why? Because I didn't want that spirit to get at me and come into me. And and so this stuff, stuff can get into your spirit, man. You got to, those things you let into your spirit, man, uh, you will war against who you are in Christ. You're going to have to do more warfare. Take them down, right? And I've, I've let a lot of stuff in from the past. How many has done the same? But he's made provision for us all. Praise the Lord. We just need to put on Christ, right? He'll shield us. And he'll, he'll bring you to the place where you remember those things no more. Because when you repent, he remembers it no more. And you enter into his remembrance, and he remembers what he said about you, what Jesus did for you. Right? And, and so God, God's on a whole different level, and we need to think that way because otherwise we're living in condemnation, a mindset that is not conducive to faith. True, right? And it's connected to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That he came in the likeness of sinful, sin, sinful flesh and for sin to do away uh, with sin in his flesh that the righteousness of faith, the righteousness of law might be fulfilled in us who walk after faith. Right? That's powerful. That's where your transformation comes. That's where the, the mind of Christ is revealed. The heart of the Lord is revealed right there. So let's look at that a little bit, um, that verse. And this is what I was um, chewing on this morning around 12 something. Because he was talking to me about his treasures. And I, I had a couple thoughts that came to me. I want to bring them out here, just looking at that. I hope this is, is encouraging you right now, because this is where it's at right here. It's all in line with his word, and it's amazing. Um, so let's just look at the word peculiar and a uh, peculiar treasure, okay, and see what the Bible says about that. Because if you've been born again, this is how God sees you. You may look in the mirror and see something else, or maybe what you did yesterday or today or whatever. But when you walk in repentance, God sees you as part of his inheritance. And if you'll be obedient to that, you'll, you'll see, you'll experience the reality of the kingdom in a tangible way where you're living and moving and having your being in him. And so um, I'll read a few verses here. There's so many. Let me, um, here's one that jumped out, Deuteronomy 7, 6. I'm just going to hit a few verses. We're looking here a little, there a little. It says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And so you see these witnesses in Scripture. Um, notice he's chosen you. Uh, there's so many here. Let's see here. Deuteronomy 26, 18, the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee 
and that thou should keep all his commandments. And what are you doing? You're, you're actually, you're entering into the intellect, the mind of God. You're thinking, you're entering into the light, right? Um, I'll give you a couple more here. And this is all over. Uh, David saw this. The Lord, it says in Psalms 135, 4, hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Notice Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. That's interesting. Jeremiah 10, 16. And I'm, see, I'm looking at this, and every time you look at it, there's a little more revelation on this theme here that, that enhances or deepens your perspective by the Spirit. Okay, Jeremiah 10, 16. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is a former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. And so Israel is the rod of his inheritance. And uh, what is the rod? So interesting, huh? And we've been talking about that. The rod is, is revealed um, a branch. Like Jesus is the vine, you are the branches. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you, right? And if you look at that in a broader context, it's really interesting. Um, but literally, it means a branch or a branch off us. Um, literally, a stick for punishing, for writing, for ruling, for walking, a clan, uh, for correction, a scepter, a tribe. And the Lord has been talking to me prophetically all year since last year that his vineyard, his branches are going to start coming forth and we're going to see fruit manifest. His vineyard's coming. How many believe that's who you are as well? You're part of that, or you can be if you haven't entered into this. And um, that's really interesting. If you look at the word um, rod there, it says in Psalms 110, I, I come back to this quite a bit. You guys want to look at this? Because this is part of who you are. You're created to overcome. Your enemies need to become your footstool because you're with Jesus, right? And if they aren't, they can be. If you just enter in to this rest, and you trust in what God has said over your circumstances and believe him for it and call on him. Some of you might be saying, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to how am I going to get through this circumstance? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you can't uh, have a you don't see how you can have your breakthrough. Call on the Lord. He'll lead you. Right. That's what I do. I don't know how I'm going to make it, man. I had a, I had so many things against me this week. I cried out. I called on the Lord to save me, to guide me. And and there's there's something of His wisdom that guides you, and, and will lead you into the revelation and the knowledge of Him, and will illuminate you where you know the hope of His calling and his inheritance in the saints. So he wants you to know this, but you need you need to be led by his wisdom. Hope that makes sense. That's Ephesians chapter 1. So pray for wisdom. The Bible says he'll give it to you, right? Don't waver. Don't pray like I used to do. And one second later, one minute later, you're all thinking uh, something else and not waiting for the Lord. <laughs> no, wait, expect him, thank him. And he will, he will guide you some way, somehow. He'll lead you. 
in spite of what you don't know or what you don't feel or what you don't see. Is that the truth? I'm telling you, he made a way for you in Jesus. And he gives you, the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's how you get into this realm through reverence, through the anointing. For God gives you the ability to will and to do his good pleasure. He gives it to you. He's made it available to all of us. So, praise the Lord. I, I want to uh, go look at that really quick here. Let's look at another one here um, in a minute. Song of Solomon. This is all over. A12. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof, two hundred. And, oh, man. Isaiah 41, 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So you can become a friend of God because of Abraham and because you're born of God through Jesus. You believe him. It says those that belong to Christ Right in Galatians 20 is the latter part of that chapter. Galatians chapter 3, they are heirs of God. Right? If you belong to Christ, you are heirs. You are heirs of a you're you're connected to Abraham according to the promise, according to the word. And um, I'm telling you, once you step into this. You don't want to get out of it. How many have stepped into some of what I'm talking about? And uh, maybe we've got out of it a little bit too because of crazy circumstances to step back in, right? Take the battle to the gate, right? He strengthens those. It takes the battle to the gate. That's revealed in Isaiah 28 as well, right? Jesus gives you the case of the kingdom, right? You're, the, you're connected to him who is the head of all principality and power, there's no spiritual force that you're facing that you can't overcome through the name of Jesus. If you just believe he is who he says he is. He's a king of kings and a lord of lords, and his blood has washed you and made you a king and a priest unto him. It's true. All right, so you see the connection to the seed there. And there's more here I could bring out. Here's another one, Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus says the Lord, Isaiah 43, 1, that created thee, O Jacob. How many believe he created you in Christ from the foundation of the world, right? Nothing was made that was made but by Jesus, right? And he, and he sent here to make a way for you, and he sent the Holy Spirit to guide you into this knowledge, right? And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee and have called thee by name. Thou art mine. Thou art mine. Sometimes he shows me somebody, that person belongs to me, I want you to call him up. Okay, and they get saved every time he tells me that. There's somebody in here tonight that belongs to Jesus. They've been drawn here by the Spirit because they, they are his. <laughs> Hallelujah. I speak that by faith. And I could go on and on. Uh, so his inheritance... Coming into the revelation that you are his inheritance is probably one of the greatest revelations you could enter into. Means he's pulled you in. You're part of his treasured people. What do you think? Wow, I could, let's see here. Anyways, I think that's probably good. I could go on and on on that theme right there for a long time. I already have. 
But it's so rich, right? You start seeing that. And you start seeing it because when you speak the word in love and the Lord sends you, there's going to be a witness of the Holy Spirit. He's going to stir and change hearts and draw people into a place where they, yes, I want this. This is, this is what I want. I want to belong to God. I don't want to belong to the devil no more. And that's why there's so much warfare when you get saved because the devil thinks he owns you controls you, possesses you, and he's played a mind a mind game on so many people they don't even realize it. And that's why you need to be seated with Christ and become part of this rod that the Bible says you are. Let's go look at that, Psalms 110. I'm telling you, there's more to you than meets the eye. You might be a, a frail little lady or an elderly gentleman or a little youngster. God in you is greater than any of those things in the world. And you can overcome through faith. Uh, okay, Psalms 110. And I like to bring this out because it's a now word. And what did the... The Lord say, here's the Psalm of David. The Lord said to my Lord, thou art, uh, my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Verse one. One, verse one. So who's, who's doing this? The Lord. He's already done it through the cross. You need to be seated. This is how David operated. He said, the Lord is always before me before his face and he had a living revelation of this in the old covenant what does that look like we talked about it last week he meditated on the precepts upon the, the testimonies of god and it made him wiser and stronger than his adversaries he didn't try to fight with his own ability no it was the anointing came on him and then it says, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion to rule in the midst of thine enemies. And uh, his people shall be willing in the day of his power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of youth. And this is, this is the, we're in the dew of the morning. We're in the morning right now. But look at the word rod. It's the same word we just read. read. It's a branch. A tribe, whether for chastening, for correcting, for ruling, a scepter, right? Talks about that Hebrews 1, thy throne, O God, is a scepter of righteousness, is a scepter of thy kingdom. When you see the light from the word of God, it pulls you into his righteousness, into his authority, and empowers you to reign in life. And it's through grace. We're saved by grace. And the good thing about grace is it multiplies. Through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, you can reign as kings in life by Jesus Christ. Hope this is resonating and reproducing revelation in you right here, right now. And so it's a, it's a rod, a staff, a tribe. Support of life, example, bread, and there's a whole another message right there on bread. But you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You have been quickened and together with him made to sit in heavenly places. Do you believe it? And uh, that's the problem that hinders us is do we believe it by the Spirit? Are we making a way for Jesus to uh, to transform our minds? Does that make sense? And a lot of people, they say they believe it, but they still are living, rooted in the old nature in Adam, and there's not the kingdom manifestation. Because their, their mind has been uh, taken captive. They've been darkened in the realm of their soul. Hope that makes sense. That's why we need to take our thoughts, right? Make a way for the mind of Christ. 
Reckon yourself, Romans 6, indeed, right? Dead unto sin, buried with him in his baptism, and you're going to yield your members no more to the will of the flesh or to sin. You're yielding your members as instruments of righteousness. And when you do that, that word is a, a word for armor, especially for war. What Jesus did for you comes on you. He was, he was, he was clad with zeal as a cloak. It's revealed in Scripture, Isaiah 59. He put on the weapons of warfare for you. It comes on through you yielding your members, your mind, your heart, your, your arms, your whole being unto his righteousness. And the weapons of our warfare, again, are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. The weapons of our the word weapons is the same word as instrument. When you yield your your instruments unto him, you make a way for what he did for you to manifest through you through faith, through obedience. And, and you become like another person. You become a king like David. You have power like Saul. You can prophesy, you can do things through the anointing, right? You can preach the gospel like Jesus, right? Because it's the same anointing. You can know all things because of that anointing. But he needs to abide in you. And that's what we're talking about, becoming a place of habitation. This is a season of Sukkot or tabernacles. Okay, and so will you read for me? Um, I want to bring this out here that there's a connection with the anointing. And every word you receive is connected to an anointing. There's an anointing for it. Every promise has an anointing. The life is in the seed. Every seed produces after its kind, right? Uh, come on up. And this is of 1 John 2.27. And just read it here. So you're a branch. This is a season for the branches. Okay. Go ahead. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Okay. So you see that? Tie that in with Isaiah 26, here a little, there a little. This is how God teaches and establishes doctrine. Praise the Lord. 1 John 2, 27. Verse 20 says, you have an unction of the Holy One, an anointing, and you know all things. And I could give you more on this, but go study it out. It's there for you. Praise the Lord. So what do you think about that? And so we're looking at um, this and the connection with the anointing, the oil. Um, and there's something about the oil, the anointing of Jesus will bring you into the light as he's in the light. And, and it's through, uh, through his blood. Uh, let's go look at um, this. I'll just have to, I'll have to close here in a couple of verses. And um, such a big subject. But go to Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, read this. We're going to read this now in the light of all the revelation we just read. And I believe you're going to have a little more perspective here. May the Lord connect the dots a little bit more. So I'm just going to read a few verses. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in Christ. This is where we got to get, we got to become a priest unto the Lord so that we can walk it out in his authority as kings on the earth. Your peculiar treasure, holy priesthood, right? Chosen. Verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. we got to believe that by the word. can't just read it and say, oh, your carnal nature will judge that and close the heavens on your life. Your greatest hindrances to seeing the kingdom is your, your old mentality. It will limit you. That's a word right there. He has chosen you according as he has chosen us in him. It's in his word. He is the word, right? Before the found the words of Jesus, right? The words of the gospel goes all the way back. And before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love and covenant, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. See, he's bringing us unto him. Why? Because you're his treasure. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And the Lord is going to open up a, a deeper understanding of his riches in the days ahead. Wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure, his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. I'm telling you, this is some powerful stuff here. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both that which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. How many believe that might include us? In whom we also have obtained an inheritance. You have obtained an inheritance just like these guys in the Old Covenant. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. His counsel. Who is Jesus? He is a wonderful counselor. His counsel is miraculous even. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. All right. Praise, could you read 1 Peter 2, 9 for me and come back up here? I'll just camp out on that for a second. First Peter, we're almost done. Teaching night tonight. 1 Peter 2, 9. Yeah. So, so we're looking at this a little bit more in another place. Okay, go ahead. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay. Amen. So see, that connects with this verse. What do you guys think? I'm telling you, there could be a witness of the Holy Spirit here bearing witness in your life right now, in whom we have, and whom also... Excuse me, verse 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and whom also after that you believe were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. How many think that's a big deal of being sealed? What does that mean? What's it mean, Genevieve, to be sealed? Which, which is the, the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased, the purchased possession unto the praise, 
of his glory. Okay, so it, it elaborates on 1 Peter 2. I'm in Ephesians chapter 1, picking up now in verse 15. And I want to bring this out here. So why does he give you wisdom? So he can bring you into the revelation of the hope of your calling and his inheritance in the saints. You are part of his inheritance. And when you step into this and you're trusting and hoping in that, and you're resting, you're seated with Christ. And you're not just going to be seated, you're going to be moving and doing things as he leads you. You're going to see a transformation. That's what you need. And again, it's all connected to humility or yielding. Just have that mind transfigured, right? To be stamped with a signet private mark of security or... Preservation, literally a figurative by Im implicit. implication. Thank you. To keep secrets, to attest, set, a set, seal up stock. Okay. What's that? Could you read 12, uh, um, Romans 12 for me? Come back up here for a minute. I'm trying to bring out. Whoa, wow, fire here. Whew. Romans 12. 12 one. Just read a few verses. Okay. This is like the roadmap into this realm here. Okay, go ahead. I beseech you the I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There you go. Amen. How are you going to get into this realm? Right there. Praise the Lord. See, he's a fiery good preacher right there. All right, so... Verse 15, I'm almost done. Wherefore I also, Ephesians 1, 15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So wisdom is going to bring you into this knowledge of him. What's it going to do? That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints he wants you to know that. You're part of his inheritance. And what is exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And it goes on. So this is a season for the church to become the church. We can't play church and act like we're, we're the church. No, we have to be the church. There needs to be there needs to be a witness of love and us helping people and doing these things that the Bible says we're called we all can do and and becoming these living sacrifices, living martyrs for the Lord, being witnesses for God. Nobody can make that choice for you but you. This is an individual thing. And again, just because you see devils coming out of people and this and that and people trying to make things happen doesn't mean it's God. He doesn't even know people unless they do the will of the Father which is in heaven. He calls those people workers of iniquity. It's a bewitching spirit that gets on people 
that that step over or stumble over that that revelation hey i can't do anything in and of myself i have to yield myself onto his righteousness so that i can have a revelation of of the faith that speaks to my heart we need to hear it by the Spirit, is what I'm saying. You're not going to hear it without the Word. you got to get the Bible in your heart, in your mind, and read it a little bit every day. Become a student, a disciple, so that you can know the, the truth that sets you free. Free from what? Sin and death and everything that's ungodly. What does that mean? Everything that's not of faith is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. And, and God has said things. There's, there's a witness against you when you do things in a rebellious way. You might think you're going to do this and do that. But it's all going to come back to haunt you at the end if you don't repent and, and line up with the word. Yes. When we're reading the word, we're learning God's character and nature and how he speaks and how he speaks. And when when we're very spiritual beings and we're new in Christ and we've been really spiritual our whole lives, we are connected into the spiritual realm where you've been hearing things for a long time. So when you are used to leaning into the spirit and hearing things, and if you don't know God's character and nature, you might think God's speaking to you, but it's another thing that's mimicking the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can really discern is to know how God would speak and how he would think mm -hmm. and his heart and his nature. And then you can discern what's speaking to you and through you because you could be in the spirit and hearing the Holy Spirit one moment and the next moment something else you picked up on and you're speaking in another thing. And you can't know unless you know the character and nature and how the Lord would speak and how he would release love. And I personally am speaking from personal experience because I know how that works. That's how he taught me how to pray in the spirit and discern one moment I'm hearing the Holy Spirit and the next moment I would interpret a word and I'm like, wait, Jesus wouldn't say that word. And so you have to know the word and you have to know the character and the nature and the heart of the father to be able to prophetically speak things properly and in the right heart. Amen. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Really okay. Well, I hope this has blessed people here. I see somebody's watching. Um, and I have this um, recorded to uh, YouTube. And my website is under attack right now. I don't know what's going on there. I can't stream to my website right now but i've captured it on youtube and you can get to it from our website harvestsatellitenetwork.com if you're if you're so inclined and um, i hope that this blesses you and if this is speaking to you tonight and saying and the lord is he's drawing people that belong to him just turn to the lord return to the lord maybe you've gotten away from him and say, yes, Lord, I want all that you have for me. I humble myself. I call on the Lord, save me, deliver me, and he will. And um, if you have an offering you want to sow in and help me in my television evangelism or whatever I do, I, I'm starting to go out more and more. You can do so right now, or you can sow a seed into the church here. This is, a, this is open to the whole body of Christ, this meeting. If you don't have a church, you can come on Sundays. We have a service for people. And um, we pray the Lord would richly bless you and your gift. And uh, thank you for watching. Praise the Lord.